Hey guys, this is Lauren with Peace My Heart Rescue. I'm gonna do a quick video on how to do toenails because I have a lot of my friends that can't do their dog's toenails. It's weird. Um, I was like, oh, I could do them. You can do them too. I promise you, you can do them. Unless your dog is like really super dangerous. I think if you go into a vet or a really good groomer and say, can I pay you to show me how to do my dog's toenails because it is so important to do them every two weeks. In this video, you'll see I interviewed Sherry White from Harrisburg, Illinois. You know, I drove three hours to get a really, really good groomer. She's been doing it since she was probably in high school. So she has professional groomer, grooming training from a groom school um, and she runs Sherry's Pampered Pets, and you can probably look her up uh, if you're in the Southern Illinois area. She's a fantastic groomer. She's the groomer that if your dog's been fired from other groomers, she usually takes it and doesn't have a problem. She kind of has a kind of an innate ability to work with dogs that are stressed. You need to learn how to do this. Your dog's gonna live to be what, you know, 10, 15, sometimes 20 years. This is every two weeks, every two weeks of your life, you're gonna take your dog in to get its toenails trimmed for like five, 10 bucks at the vet or the groomer. I mean, and groomers will tell you they would like for you to trim the dog's toenails in between the groom trips. That would be ideal so that the dog's quick isn't so long that they can't trim them as short as they should be to help them walk properly. You've seen some of the dogs come into the rescue that have been um, that have not had their toenails trimmed. It's kind of sad, but um, this is Chuck. Hi, Chuck. Oh, he is such a lover. Doesn't he look like Jackson? Do you look like Jackson? He acts like him too. He's afraid of a snowball that the kids made in the, in the yard once. I had to coax him to go up and approach it. Uh, you'll see Raven look up there. So I have posted videos of Jude getting her toenails done and she's probably the worst dog I've ever trimmed toenails. Um, when I adopted her out I interviewed the groomer and the vet and she's been fired from three groomers in the southern Indiana area and she's not bit me and I'm not a professional so I uh, interviewed her the uh, the adoptive vet and groomer both of which oh we're fine, thank you crazy rescue lady, but we know how to do this. Well, she bit both of them, right? So now I'm grooming Jude's toenails for free the rest of her life. At one point, I took her in, check out this, check out this vet invoice, $27 to drummel her toenails, $27 to do her toenails. Hold on just a second. It takes me, what, five, ten minutes tops to do her toenails, and uh, $27, what's that work out? It'd be $160-something dollars an hour? I'm in the wrong field, I'll tell you that right now. The more you work on it using treats, you could use, you know, things that motivate your dog and takes their mind off of it, um, definitely have a professional show you how to do it. Uh, if it's possible, say, is it possible for me to work my dog through this toenail trimming process and I want it to be easier for everybody for you as the owner on your pocketbook easier on the dog and easier on your groomer uh, when when it's time for them to groom your dog uh, it makes life so, so much easier so check this out share it around if you end up using these techniques and your dog comes around let me know we'd like we like to hear from people if, if these videos work so um, anyway thanks a lot for watching you see this diagram here if you were to trim this dog's toenail, uh, you cut right along the yellow line there. So it's like straight across. It makes the toenail stick straight out versus curling down. It's a pretty easy rule to remember. Um, this next photo is Dolly's foot upside down. You can see um, this is how I trim them. It makes it easy for me to kick their foot backwards and I just cut it straight across. Um, having a white toenail like this makes it easy to see where the pink is, uh, where the blood supply is. And you just kind of cut it straight off like this next photo. You see how the tip's gone. Um, the quick, it's starting to get a kind of meaty area right there and that's good enough, especially for an old dog. They get thicker and thicker. Uh, but this next photo is a black toenail uh, where you can really see the quick pretty easy down there. You see that little little area 
um, underneath, tucked underneath the toenail that's curled around, and you trim that off, and you'll see that the quick is left in the next photo. See, pretty easy. And that I would probably dremel off so it doesn't scratch people or file it, depending on what your dog can tolerate. And this next video is uh, Sherry showing you how to do a Boston Terrier's toenail that has both colors. And some people like to put the foot backwards or forwards. Whatever's comfortable for the dog. Okay. I, you know, we'll do a clear one first. You can see the vein is right there. Another way to look at it is if you kind of feel, you'll feel like a little rough spot to right there. So that would be the safe area. If you look at the back of the nail, there's kind of a dry area right there. So if you can kind of feel to the dry area so is to right it. there, you can kind of see it. So you can take that part off. It's Same. easier when they have the clear nails. Yeah, yeah the with the clear, ones. but you can kind of see there, see that area right there. So you can take that. He grows quick, don't they? Yeah, they his do grow fast. You can kind of just nip a couple times. Okay, and down, then, down, calm down. The best way to get the sharp edges off. Okay. Just tap it in kind of a round circle. Get all the little edges. No, it's a cool now. You're not listening. Now get see there's a little hang nail. There, there we go. That was what the hangnail, too. And this is just a regular Dremel that you got. Mm -hmm. Comes store. from Walmart. <laughs> yeah, Walmart Dremel. Walmart Dremel, nothing special. If you have a hairy dog, you can actually take a um, little knee high or a little footy. Like you get at Kohl's or something mm -hmm. in the shoe department. Yeah, just a little, little. Uh, nylon, stick a, just a tiny hole in it, and you can actually put that over the foot, and you can actually do Hold the fur back. Fur, fur back, and you can actually dremel the nails on a long-haired dog. Otherwise, it'll curl around. Okay, see how it's kind of dry on the back of the nail? Yep. And that one, so you can kind of see the vein, and then it goes, so you want to go about right there. You can kind of see the dry area. So you can kind of see the dry area and what kind of ends right there. Yeah. So that kind of gives you a guide, even on a black nail. Hold on. Mommy got you. It's okay. And he says this is taking longer than we normally do. <laughs> That's excellent. Bottom down. And then there's the dew cloth. But these nice white nails make it easy. Sure does. That's good deal. Good deal. Look at the Dremel. Round it off. A lot of dogs like the Dremel better than they like the yep, I noticed the that. nail. And you can do all of that with just the Dremel. You can do that once a week and you'll never have to trim your dog's nail. stuff off. The stuff that scratches you when they go into crazy puppy mode. Yep. You can kind of see that dry comes off of there. Leaves a nice pretty foot. Yeah, pretty. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to do dogs that don't like their toenails trimmed. Neil's kind of eventful sometimes. Look at his face. Yes, it's like, yeah. I got weird nails anyway. See? Just go with it. Yeah, just go with it. You want them to know that you got a hold of the paw, but it's not. You're not restraining. You're just, yeah. just going to hold. Okay. Yeah. I haven't heard you, have I? I haven't. 
<laughs> would you suggest people have them tethered like this to kind of help good. it? Yeah. yeah. That way you got a little bit of control of the dog. Good I got boy. a little bit of I did. Boy. Yay. Yeah, Patience is good the main boy. thing. Do not scream and holler at the dog. Just sit and wait. Really not. He's like, are you serious, lady? <laughs> I do. Good boy. He's a good boy. Now, if there's two people in the household, somebody can hold them. But if you're but just don't a one, restrain too much. Okay. Yeah, don't restrain too much. Don't make it scary. Yeah. You don't want them to think that there's no way out. Okay. One of them think, oh, this is annoying, but you don't want the dog to think, oh my gosh, I gotta go into a, you know, fight or flight mode. Yeah. You're okay. Well, that's called an edge. Yes. <laughs> that's called an you edge. You found it. Good boy. <laughs> but just kind of just keep him calm. Yeah. And he has very weird toenails, as you'll notice. Good boy. Are you looking at me? Yeah. We're gonna trim your nails. I mean, he wouldn't do that. He he would if he was gonna bite her. He's gonna go for her hands. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Cocker spaniels go for the face. <laughs> He's gonna start talking to you like, okay. <laughs> Oh, I just drink a little piece off. Yes, I see. Like, yes, I Neil. She's outsmarting you, bud. Oh. He goes, hmm, the next one's going to be a little bit more tricky. He's going to look okay. He's going to do a handstand. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. He goes, there we go. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I like to put the teeth on the hands. Yeah. A little bit of a warning of my potential. Mm -hmm. You can't, you can't, you can't, you know, no. Yeah. Good boy. He looks at me every time yeah. like, oh. See? Something good. Just calm. Calm. Yeah. After a while, they're just like, ah, do it. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to move on with my life. Uh, oh, okay. Almost. Almost. Yeah, the Yankee leg. Almost. There should be a song. Where, where are you going? See, it's not so bad. I lived. You did. See, that wasn't so bad after all, was it? Aww. He said, yeah. Yeah. Proud of himself. He said, you were a good boy. He's like a boy. You were a good Aww. boy. It's like a love getting oh, scratched. Oh, I got the other one. Now this is going to be the scary one. Where he's got his hurt toenail. Oh, goodness. Oh, my goodness. See, I got your toenail. Yes, I did. Let me look. Yeah. I do. I still have it. Yeah. I do. Yeah. 
Ten, what would you say he is on a groom table? Oh, he's, he's ten. Ten being maybe we should sedate him, and one being they just stand there like a stuffed animal. Oh, I'd say he's he's probably four or five, right in the middle. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's not bad at all. But for most groomers, because you're not the average. Most groomers would probably grab hold of him and hold on and, and that let him be... scream bl bloody murder and, and scare him to death. Yeah. And so then they can go get him over the edge. You don't let him go over the edge. Yeah. Who oh, are you mad now? Why are you mad? They put me on the floor. I'm going to party. Yeah. Go check out these girls over here that are talking. Huh? Yeah. That's what I want. We need. Well, thanks, Sherry. But no, Says I'm that pretty. Bad. Okay. Eesh. So you're telling the story about the uh, was it Cocker Spaniel? Yeah, but when you hold the paw, so you're going to hold it like that. You're holding it that way. If they really are afraid, they can pull it away. You're going to hold the paw. You don't restrain it. You're not going to squeeze. You're not going to hold it like that and squeeze and hold where if they pull back, it's going to actually... I just will hold the paw. That way they know that you, you've got it, but there's an out. They, they can pull it away if they're if they're just so scared that they don't think they're you know that it's it's gonna hurt so but if you you're gonna hold the paw you're not gonna you know completely restrain it they you want them to feel like they're not completely out of control so if, if dog owners at home they have a dog that is hard to turn their toenails um, what should they be doing Right there. Should be holding it. Touch, yeah, touching their feet. Yeah, touching their feet. When the dog's calm, half asleep, run your hand, you know, touch, touch, touch. So you know, he's still going to yeah, pull away pull away a little bit, but he's just learning that you can hold it. You can, you know, stick your finger between their toes, you know, and just to the point where they almost think it's almost a massage. And then every once in a while, touch, 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 and just kind of even press on those toes until he learns that you're okay, you know, it's it's not going to hurt. So what, what do you do if there's somebody that's um, had a dog that's been hurt by a groomer and then you get it, I mean, do you, you have to work through that It area. may take two to three times to be able to do the nails. I had one that came from a rescue that had been sedated to groom. Yeah. And the first time I did it, I wasn't sure if I'd ever be able to do it again, but I thought, Let's see what happens the second time. The yeah. second time was a little bit better. The third time was even better. Yes, I did have to put a muzzle on it for its nails for about three times after that. Now you can, he actually hands me his paws. Wow. So you, it's just, they, you know, they it's, remember. it's respect. It's yeah. just respect. You know, it's like, I'm not, the more restraint you put, I always, you know, I do like a table with a, with a, the noose to hold them still. But some people have all kinds of contraptions to hold the dog. The less restraint on the dog, the better, because the more you restrain and the more out of control they feel. So you want them to feel like, you know, okay, I'm, I'm in enough control that I, I can handle this. But you don't want that fight or flight. You know, if there's too much restraint, they're gonna fight and you're just going downhill from there. So you think they go home after a positive or negative grooming experience and they remember, they think about it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they, they, remember, they, it. they remember it. And you know, and after a while they, they get to the point they know who hurt them and who doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. They remember just coming in your shop? Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. But you know, do they all of them like it? No, but some of them do. Yeah. <laughs> I always tell them, it's like, you know, God made you a dog. Yeah. Like, the God made you a schnauzer. We just have to brush your feet. Yep. That's what I tell you them. Got to have your feet. Yeah. Got to have, have to get them brushed out. 
But you just sit there and mess with him enough, it just becomes calming. You know, he's, he's kind of like, okay, yeah, I can deal with it. Yeah. His eyes are closing. Look it's at that. Like you know, really touch, 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 touch. He's like, I really could care less. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good boy. Yeah. We're talking no about problem. you. You're no problem. So if you have a large breed dog that clearly won't fit on that little table that Neil was on, um, here's an alternative. Uh, I usually tether them to something to kind of keep them stable. Usually I use my deck rail and I'll show you here in this example with Raven and Chuck. I mean, big dogs, you can maybe do Chuck, how much you do to your toenails. I just like loop them around the post like this, you know. I mean, he's not choking, he's hanging out, you know. And then I just, here. You just do it like this, right? Hi, bud. Are you going to be in the middle, baby? Good boy. Right. Good boy. Loop it around like this. Like, you know, feather him. Just to hold them still, and then just show them. Good girl, huh? Yes. Hey, I know how 